Welcome to the Daily Race. All right, we are continuing our study here in Nehemiah, and yesterday we celebrated the fact that Nehemiah and the people of Jerusalem had finished building the wall. It, it was done. The project's done. 52 days. 52 days they were able to accomplish this great task because God was with them. God was helping them. A task that had remained undone for decades. Uh, just lying in ruins. So they're excited. <laughs> they're celebrating. Uh, but now we're going to move on to phase two. And you might be wondering, what's phase two? Well, what would that be? Well, let's read here. Found in Nehemiah chapter seven. It says, now when the wall had been built and I set up the doors and the gatekeepers, the singers and the Levites had been appointed, I gave my brother Hanani, uh, the governor of the, and the governor of the castle charge over Jerusalem. For he was a more faithful and God-fearing man than many. And I said to them, Let not the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun is hot. And while they are still standing guard, let them shut and bar the doors. Appoint guards from among the inhabitants of Jerusalem, some at their guard post and some in front of their own houses. So he's, he's letting them know just kind of just some procedures for keeping the city safe. So, hey, we're not opening up the gates early. We're going to keep them closed. Uh, we're going to put guards on it. We have people do lookouts around their houses. Hey, the, the wall's great. This is important for our defense, but we need people to be looking at as well, too. And, and this is why. Here in verse 4, the city was wide and large, but the people within it were few, and no houses has been, had been rebuilt. So they had this great big city, well defended, all that stuff, but there weren't that many people living in the city. There weren't, it wasn't a city full of people. Then God put into my heart to assemble the nobles and the officials and the people enrolled uh, by genealogy. And I found the book of genealogy of those who came up at the first and I found written in it. And then he kind of goes through this whole genealogy of people that were taken into captivity and that came back. And the point here, what Nehemiah is doing is Nehemiah is now focusing on the people. He had rebuilt the wall, but now it's time to populate the city. It's time to get people back living in the city. If that's where their, their origins come from, get them back in there, get them to rebuild their houses, get them to settle in there. Because a, a fortified city without people in it, that's not the point. You know, oftentimes we get so involved in a project, we forget the why. Why was Nehemiah so concerned when he heard that the walls were broken down? It wasn't because Nehemiah is, uh, was a, an architectural aficionado. It wasn't that he just loved walls and loved the city of Jerusalem and just it upset him so much that it was in ruins and that, you know, we've got to rebuild this back to, to make it beautiful and to, you know, look good. And I remember, I've heard the, of the old days of how beautiful this wall is. We've got to get this wall back up. No, that wasn't his motivation. What was his motivation? The people. The people were at risk. The people were in ruins. The people were downtrodden. It was the people were the motivation. The, the wall was a problem along the way of getting the people established. A lot of times when we tackle a, a project or a problem, the project can take priority over the people. We can finish the project, but we forget the people we started it for. Nehemiah doesn't do this. I think one of the main reasons is this. He says, then God put in my heart to assemble the nobles. Nehemiah never stopped praying. He didn't just pray in chapter one, asking for guidance on the project. He continued to be in conversation with God. As the project moved forward, as things were happening, as he had obstacles, as there were challenges, as he was looking for next steps, God was leading him along the right path and kept him focused from not veering off too far. I mean, we noticed halfway through the project, he turned in and helped the people. Now, for the next half of the book here, phase two, it's gonna be all about rebuilding the people. You know, think about just modern times. God puts a burden on, on someone's heart to, to build a homeless shelter. I mean, what a noble task, right? Now, there are people that, that need shelter, that need food, uh, that need an opportunity to maybe get some training, and, and God puts this burden on your heart, and you're excited about it. You find some people, you rally it together, you get the, the homeless shelter built, you celebrate its opening, and walk away. Well, 
that's not the whole project, right? Why is the homeless shelter built? For the people. <laughs> Phase two is you have to get the people to use the facility. You have to get the people to, to use the, the project that you worked on. Uh, the, the, the physical project and has to be connected to the people. And that's what Nehemiah, God has placed on Nehemiah's heart here. You got a beautiful wall, beautiful city, but the people need to get back in the city. The people need to get back settled in there. So lean into the people in this season. All right, now let's go ahead and pause there for today. Tomorrow we're going to see how he starts doing this, and we're going to uh, see a little bit of a crossover here. We're going to be introduced to Ezra. Ezra has his own book of the Bible, but Nehemiah and Ezra, they are uh, contemporaries, so we're going to see him show up. Uh, remember back in, in the days when you have like a guest appearance on a sitcom? Yeah, we got a guest appearance here in Nehemiah as uh, Ezra shows up and helps him as he reaches the people in the city. Before we get to tomorrow, though, let's, uh, let's start our day today with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we uh, just thank you. Thank you, thank you for just another day, another opportunity to, to serve you, to, to love you, to point people towards you. And God, I pray that our, our day would be honoring to you from our first step to our last step. God, we want to, to be led by you. We want to... Uh, obey you and, and honor you with our actions and our attitude and our conversations. That's our desires we step into today. So God, lead us and, and help us to do that. Help us to, uh, to, to, to follow your path throughout the rest of the day. God, I pray for conversations. I pray for our workplaces. I pray for our communities, all the interactions we're going to have. God, you know exactly what they're going to be. So help us to be prepared. Help us to be ready to, to honor you and show your light in every situation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.